Kabla! That's how Klingons toast, they say. Kabla! It means success directly, but it also more loosely translates to like, good luck, be merry, good things. Kabla! I think that's the only way to say it, too. I don't think you can be like, kabla. <laughs> Today on How to Drink We Go, where no man has gone before, and make Klingon blood wine. What's it the blood of? If I'm not mistaken, blood wine is for, and I am really going off of memory here, so I could be wrong on this. I think that blood wine is introduced in an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. Lieutenant Worf has programmed our replicators to make a very good approximation of Klingon blood wine. I believe you will find it to your liking. Big F you to Data and Deanna Troy. Uh, Klingon blood wine is uh, synonymous with Klingons. Klingons seem to love blood wine. It comes up all the time. But don't get between me and the blood wine! I think it's mentioned in several of the Star Trek films prior to Next Generation taking over that franchise. So it's funny how something can get introduced in Next Generation and then kind of like retcon its way back into the original uh, series timeline as well from there. I like that, that's fun. So I am going to make Klingon blood wine it seems to be very strongly implied in the series that blood wine is actually distilled or fermented, or fermented and distilled, or just fermented in space fermentation, um, from blood. I think it's a Tark, is this uh, porcine spiky spike pig that the Klingons use in a lot of stuff, and it might be Tark's blood. I think it's called a Tark. Uh, and it might be this other critter that comes up sometimes with Klingon folklore that they make the blood from that blood. I have an odd craving for the blood of a live Kolar beast. Um, I, I say it's called Klingon blood wine. It might be made from Klingon blood. I don't know. That'd be weird, but vampires. Space vampires. Probably not. A long story short, I'm not going to use blood in it because that would be crazy. The other thing that we know about it is that it's supposed to be twice as strong as human whiskey. So it really can't be wine unless we mean wine in like a euphemistic sense or something the way that like uh, Gaoling Baijo is called wine. It's not wine. So we're not gonna make it out of wine either. This is my Klingon blood wine. It's neither blood nor wine. Disgust. Talk amongst yourselves. I just need a moment of your time to talk about wine from the planet Earth. I love wine, uh, but I don't know much about it. And shopping for wine is a real chore for me. I wander around, I'm a bit confused by everything I see on the shelf, and I generally just pick a cool looking label and go with that. You go to brightsellers.com though, little quiz, Super duper easy, very, very fast to fill out, very not snobby. Then their experts figure out from that what kind of wines you're probably going to love. They pair you up with wines from the best producers in the world, and they ship them to you directly in the mail based on the schedule of your choosing. One of the things I love about the Bright Sellers experience too is after you get your shipment, you can review the wine and tell Bright Sellers what they got right or what they got wrong. They will further tailor your picks and selections to your taste. This second shipment that I got from them is really on the money. I am thoroughly enjoying this pet name, Petit Serra. And just from the description, I haven't had a chance to open the bottle yet. Mojave Rain Cabernet Sauvignon sounds exactly like something I'm going to like. Uh, but if it's not, I'll let them know, and Bright Sellers is going to use that information to pick better wine for me in the future. If you're interested, you're in luck, because Bright Sellers is giving fans of how to drink 50% off their first six bottle box. So take the link below and fill out the quiz and you'll be on your way. Enjoy. So Klingon blood wine is supposed to be twice as strong as whiskey, uh, really disgusting to drink, and served warm. This blood wine is cold! Get me another one! Uh, I prefer my drinks to not taste terrible. So let's call this a human palatable approximation of blood wine. Don't feel badly if you can't stomach it. I didn't say that. I think that will get us there. This would be uh, the blood wine that Guinan might serve to uh, Picard and Ten Forward uh, to prepare him for a detente with some local Klingon delegations. That sounds acceptable. I, I, that sounds right to me. And now, although blood wine is said to be harsh, we know that it can also be sweet since we know that Lieutenant Worf prefers his blood wine to be young and sweet. 
Uh, that is, when he's not drinking prune juice. Warriors drink. We do know from Deep Space Nine that Klingon blood wine is very important, central in fact, in the ritual of induction into the Order of the Batleth. Uh, the ritual seems to involve standing around and drinking gallons of it, fighting each other all night to prove your staying power or intestinal fortitude. I, I don't know, it's, it's a Klingon thing, I don't really get it. So I can add all of that up and say that I will make a drink that is strong, possibly sweet, bracing, but also palatable to uh, human physiology, something that I would want to drink. It's really not too bad, <clears throat> except for the taste. So I'm gonna shake this drink because revenge is a dish best served cold. This is a very important Klingon proverb. I wanna start with one ounce of simple syrup. It's so actually, this recipe that I came up with is uh, very simple, it's all equal parts. I want one ounce of lime juice for this. I want one ounce of Lemon Heart 151. So, I said twice as strong as whiskey. Not maybe twice as strong, but we're pretty close right here. <laughs> and I want one ounce of Angostura bitters. So there's a few drinks you'll find that call for uh, larger than Dasher measures of Angostura bitters. Um, and frankly, I think that they're all wonderful. There's an Angostura sour, uh, which is definitely worth exploring, and the Trinidad sour. They're kind of uh, cousins. I did a Trinidad sour, on the show, I should do it again, actually, because it's a weird episode. It's a very vloggy episode where I, uh, that I made a while back when I went to Bar Convent Brooklyn. So it's not shot here in the bar, it's shot out on the street and uh, in my old apartment. So we're gonna put in one ounce of Angostura bitters. I'll provide a link to that episode in the uh, everywhere. Angostura now makes very large bottles, like, um, I'm not sure if it's a full 750, but you can get a bigger bottles of Angostura bitters, which are uh, will facilitate you in making those kinds of drinks that require, you know, half ounce, ounce pours of Ango. I'm gonna shake up this drink in my shaker. Big cube and my cracked cube. I brought out a couple of extra drinking vessels here because it would certainly be appropriate to drink it out of a skull or a horn, but then you wouldn't get to see the look of this drink, so um, believe it or not, I'm gonna put it in this. I'm gonna double strain so that I can do this quickly. Uh, and to garnish this drink, uh, I have nothing I would garnish this with, but if you had some sort of like uh, space monster teeth, or metal spiky bits or razor blades to ornament the glass with, that would be the way to go. It definitely doesn't need like an orange wheel or a lemon twist or something like that or a cherry. I just don't think that it's gonna help the drink at all. Um, and I think that, that's pretty cool looking color. I think we've got a nice red hue there uh, that looks like old blood to me, so. Rusty. Kabla! I love that. It is. Bracing. That is an aggressive drink. It is dry. The bitters, the bittering parts of bitters really just like suck the moisture out of your tongue and your tonsils and your mouth and just like <sharp inhale> give you instant dry mouth. It's a very experiential drink. Uh, you know, you, you get this like wash of dryness and then you salivate and it's tart and sweet, but definitely not overly sweet. It's not too bitter to drink. I, I like how bitter it is, honestly. I can see it, it being something... Honestly, I think most people are going to like this drink. It is exceedingly high proof because it's an ounce of 151, but let's not forget that this is, um, you know, 88. This is 90 proof as well or so. So, I mean, this is, this is a potent drink here. It is sweet and spicy up front. The first flavors you get are maybe like cinnamon and allspice and sugar. And then that gives way to just like this wash of bitterness that is very exper experiential, it kind of assaults your mouth. And then that quickly subsides, your mouth salivates, you get like very, um, a lot of, produce a lot of saliva as a result. And then you get more cinnamon, more of that allspice flavor uh, that gives way to, uh, all through tartness, by the way, there's the tartness of the lime is throughout all of this kind of uh, helping the flavors along, accentuating the flavors like the salt in cooking. And then that gives way to um, just sort of a very pleasant warmth 
This is a great drink. I love this drink. I'm very pleased with this drink. And frankly, I think I nailed it. I think I got this. My Twitter is how to drink. My Instagram is how to drink. My Patreon is patreon.com slash how to drink. I've got a Twitch at twitch.tv slash Greg from HTD. I, will, um, I hope you will check that out. Some good Star Trek video games. Maybe we'll, we'll take a look at those. We'll do some Star Trek-y stuff over there. That'd be fun. If you like this show, I hope you will subscribe. Drop me a comment. Do all those things you're supposed to say in a YouTube video. Honestly, if you like this show, I hope you'll check out some of my other episodes. I made uh, Romulan Ale. I'm going to put a link up to that. I have made um, other things that you might like. I've done some... I did Blue Milk from Star Wars. I am not conflating Star Wars and Star Trek. Uh, please don't be offended by that. Uh, I would never, ever do such a thing. But I feel like there's interests overlap. All right, so I'm going to leave you with some Klingon proverbs. Uh, 4,000 throats may be cut by a running man. I think that's actually a riff on the coward dies many deaths. Death is an experience best shared. I like this one. This is my favorite one, though. Pity the warrior who slays all of his foes. You know, because he's got no foes anymore. There's nothing to do. He's bored. Live long and prosper. Kapla. Revenge the bish. Or bish. I can't I'm saying a bish. Revenge the bish.